we can actually very fondly call father of the modern India's telecom, Dr. Sam Petroda. Sir is an internationally respected telecom inventor, entrepreneur, development thinker, and policymaker who has spent almost 49 years in information and communication technology and related global and national developments. Credited with having led the foundation for India's telecommunications and technology revolution of 1980s, Dr. Petroda has been a leading campaigner to help bridge the global digital divide. During his tenure as advisor to Prime Minister, he led six technology missions related to telecommunications, water, literacy, immunization, dairy production, and oil seeds. He was also the founder and the first chairman of India's Telecom Commission. In these plural roles, Dr. Petroda helped revolutionize India's development philosophies and policies with focus on access to technology as a key to social change. As a way to induce the second phase of India's technology revolution in 2005, Sir headed India's National Knowledge Commission to provide a blueprint of reform for the knowledge-related institutions and infrastructure for the 21st century in the country. Recently, he has served as advisor to Prime Minister of India on public information infrastructure and innovation with the rank of a cabinet minister, and he served as a chairman of the Smart Grid Task Force, as well as the committees to reform public broadcasting, modernize railways, deliver e-governance, and other development ac activities. He's also a founding commissioner of United Nations Broadband Commission for Digital Development and chairman of the International Telecommunication Union's Empowering Development Board that looks to empower developing countries with the use of mobile technology. In addition, Dr. Petroda holds over 15 honorary PhDs, close to 100 worldwide patents, and has published and lectured widely in United States, Europe, Latin America, and Asia. I would now request our honorable speaker, keynote speaker for today, Dr. Sam Petroda, to share his vision with us. Are you not able to connect? Good evening, sir. Good evening. I'm very sorry for stealing your sleep. I know it's late oh, night, um, but thank you so much for giving your time. It was uh, a little uh, change, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that uh, the traffic could, uh, did not stop to come home early. But sorry for the delay again, sir. But, and can we start now? Sure. Meeting, I must share with you, sir, there are almost 800 students, uh, mm -hmm. graduate management students, and they belong to various streams, marketing, finance, telecom, operation systems, HR, and we, and we have all the faculties here. We have Father Abraham, uh, who is the director of uh, XLRI, and we have our president, Dr. Professor Colonel A. Bala Subramanian, uh, who is the president of our society, Sri Balaji Society, and all the faculty members. So, sir, over to you. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. Dr. Seema Singh. Jokarkar, Professor Bala Subramanian, distinguished guests, dignitaries, dear students, faculty, ladies and gentlemen, greetings from Chicago. It is indeed a special privilege to have this opportunity to talk to so many young students on telecom, technology, management, 
and related issues. Just to give you a little bit of my own background, I'm 72 years old and I've spent just about 50 years in telephone business. So a lot of my conversation is going to be based on my own journey and my own experiences in telecom. When I started in telephone business just about in 1965, almost all of the telephone systems were predominantly electromechanical. Stroger switches, crossbar, and then people were really experimenting with electronics. Bell Lab was the leader in the US. And a lot of the innovations in telecom came out of Bell Labs. So I want to give you a little bit of the history. Talk about telecom in India, past, present, and future. I won't take more than 30, 35 minutes, and then we can open up for more conversation. So Bell Lab was the really the focal point for global innovations in telecom then. Bell Lab had gone into digital transmission with pulse code modulation, T1 line, E1 line. And there was conversation at that point in time about digital switching. So I got to work on digital switching in 1965-66. And as a result, I had an opportunity to see through that substantial change that got us from electromechanical stroger switches into digital era. In early 70s, we were still experimenting with digital switches. It's only in early 80s we started massive conversion world over into digital infrastructure. That is just about the time in the US where AT&T was the monopoly with almost million employees, largest company in the country, was being broken up. AT&T got broken up because of a court case. And that gave rise to privatization, liberalization in telecom world over. So when world was going from analog, electromechanical to digital, world was also going through restructuring of the organization, management style. So we had to set up different set of institutions world over. So on one hand, you have International Telecom Union, which is the oldest part of United Nations, where standards are created. And that came out of wireless activities while the industry until 80s was still a monopoly predominantly run by governments everywhere else except in few countries like US. But there also it was a private monopoly. I spent about 10, 15 years designing digital switches build a company in US that I started in 1974. I sold that to Rockwell International and then came to India after many years 
and couldn't really make a telephone call from Delhi to Chicago to my wife. I tried several times. Based on my own experiences, I was convinced that telecom was an instrument to connect people and with Indian diversity, telecom could really be an instrument for nation building in India. Based on my experiences in US, I was also convinced that information and communications technology will bring about openness, accessibility, connectivity, networking, democratization, decentralization, and as a result, hopefully, social transformation. Since I couldn't make a call, I realized that in 1980, telephone system in India was pretty bad. We had less than 2 million phones for a country of 750 million people then. And it used to take 10, 15 years to get a telephone. For example, even in France, telephone system then was pretty bad. People used to say that in France, in those days, half of the people were waiting to get a telephone, and other half were waiting to get a dial call. So when I saw this little bit of arrogance on my part, and a lot of ignorance said, I'm going to spend next decade of my life to help build telephone infrastructure in India. I came home to Chicago, talked to my wife, and I said, I'm going to really spend time in India, basically creating a new model of development which is suitable for developed world, which is based on indigenous development, ancillary industry, local production, young talent, digitization of the network, rural telecom, and focus on accessibility as opposed to telephone density. World over telephone density was the norm. Everyone was focused on improving telephone density. And my idea was to improve access because when you have 2 million phones in a country of 750 million people with limited local production capacity, local talent, it is difficult to really increase numbers substantially. So I got a chance to meet with Mrs. Indira Gandhi, then Prime Minister, gave her one hour presentation, in the process met Rajiv Gandhi, and we decided to set up for the government, Center for Development of Telematics in Delhi and Bangalore, and collected about 400 young people like you all who helped build hardware and software from scratch to build rural telephone exchange, PABX, central office switching and all of that. Then component technology was very different. Software was very different. C language had just been invented in early 80s. So we decided to use microprocessor from Motorola, 16-bit then. We had just come out with 8-bit microprocessor. I had seen 4-bit microprocessor at Intel being developed in 74 which I used for one of my patents on electronic diary. I used 8-bit processor to develop first large PABX systems in US. So we had to do a lot of groundwork with young talent. In the process, we built human resource, ancillary industry, local production, Government gave us $36 million in three years to build the product, design the product, with great deal of 
political will and help from Rajiv Gandhi, then Prime Minister, and young talent. We build rural exchange, ABX, and set up foundation for human capacity in Telecom. At the same time, we built CDAC, Center for Development of Advanced Computing. We created local industry infrastructure, like Bharti Telecom then used to make this telephone instrument. Sunil so Mittal was a young boy who used to come to my office. And the only thing in those days people could make was PBX and telephone. Because in India also we had a government monopoly. So we systematically decided to break that monopoly by giving production local entrepreneurs all of the seeds that we planted during Rajiv Gandhi's time in IT and Talata has given us huge global recognition, respect, business potential, young talent, and now we have gone from 2 billion phones in 1980 to about a billion phones in 2015. We are a nation of a connected billion. All of that happened in a short span of 30 years. In 30 years, it's not a long time in a history of a country. This has really changed the very foundation of India, according to me. Connectivity is so very critical for development going forward. In the process, a lot of our private entrepreneurs like Sunil Mittal, Reliance, Idea, Tata, and many others really worked hard to scale. But to go from where we were to where we are, we had to set up a telecom commission. Given telecom more autonomy. And all of these things are very difficult in early 80s when the mindset was really not geared towards respecting privatization, liberalization, globalization, free market economy foreign investments. All of these were very new ideas then. And it took a long time to really socialize a lot of these concepts. Credit goes to the government as well as to private entrepreneurs who really came forward and built this massive infrastructure in India today. In the process, we also started building software industry. Today we do $120 billion worth of software export. Year after year, every year. We are well respected for our software capabilities world over. That number is going to go from 120 to 250 billion a year. NASCOM was, was, NASCOM was formed right in front of our own eyes. And it was really nothing at early days of the 80s. The key is, where do we go from here? So we have really gotten to a point. We have billion cell phones. We are all connected. We have lots of large companies in telecom, IT, global presence. Some of our companies are valued at tens of billions. The real challenge now is to move from voice-based billion phones to really broadband capabilities. In the process, a lot of things have happened. You get in press all kinds of stories about 2G scam, about spectrum auctions, deteriorating services, competing big businesses, 
lower cost and losing complete production base in it. There was time when we used to make a lot of our product ourselves. Today we make almost nothing of our own. We import large part of telecom equipment. So the challenge is on one hand to continue to build our software industry. On the other hand to build local production. And also really focus on improving broadband connectivity. So last five years I have been focusing on public information infrastructure, democratization of information. And for that, we first create a right to information. Realize that we have right to information, but we don't have information that is organized. So we created an office in the prime minister's office as a man with the rank of a cabinet minister really focus on information infrastructure. We first built knowledge network to connect all of our universities, libraries, R&D institutions to really connect our talent pool. This network with about 1000 nodes, hopefully 40 gigabit bandwidth, ultimately to begin with 2 gigabit is already built, working and lots of people are using it. It took about two years to build it, took about two years to plan it. Then we are building connectivity to 250,000 local panchayats. So every panchayat would be connected to optical fiber. We have million kilometers of optical fiber already in place. And we are putting on top of it about 500,000 kilometers or more. When these two things happen, we'll have the network for broadband connectivity using fiber. Because 3G, 4G is only for the last mile. Earlier we get to fiber, better off we are in terms of traffic capacity. Then we are building platforms. And the Nilakani worked on UIT. We have a proposal for national GIS. Then all of the applications for driver's license, passport, tax. We have a plan to computerize all our courts, all our prisons, all our police. This digitization effort and application is a massive. When Obama came to India, he and I spent half an hour on a lot of this. And as a result, we decided to launch a joint effort between US and Indian government on open government platform. We have some great talent at NIC. We took a lot of those people, as you know, we have about 3000 software people at NIC. With great deal of domain expertise, understanding of government processes and we have taken about six seven thousand people from the private industry so we have a pool of about ten thousand software people working on all government applications unfortunately in the past state governments have done their own thing every government has developed their own software and as a result we lack standards compatibility interoperability. So the proposal we had was to really create everything on cloud, cloud computing, open source software, low cost terminals, and really revamp the entire e-governance infrastructure. In a sense, everything we do today is basically obsolete. We need to create new infrastructure to respond to cloud computing and new tools. In addition to these applications, we have programs for mobile payment or direct transfer, 
cyber security, data centers, all of this is a vast, vast effort. These things take about a decade, a country like India, to execute. All of this has been planned. It is now sort of being implemented. The key really is local content, local applications, local language, relevant applications. Internet is one of those things that happen in a very short period of time. So people have really not been able to grasp the implication of it. To me, nothing like internet has ever happened for the last 15,000 years. Last time when language was invented, it brought communities together. Internet brings global communities together from everywhere. It has far-reaching implications on everything we do. It has richness, it has reach, and it will transform agriculture, education, health, financial services, commerce, and governance. All of the things we do today, do today were designed 50, 60 years ago. All of our processes are obsolete, world over, not just in India. How do we get a birth certificate? How do you get land record? How do you get admission in school? Why does it take four years to get a degree? Do you really need teacher? Go on a blackboard to teach something? Today, teacher is really focused on creating content and delivering content. Internet has changed learning model. You really don't need teacher to create content and play the content. But you need teacher as a mentor. But none of the teachers today are designed to be mentor, trained to be men. You can say the same thing about government. So when I look at broadband and internet, I see great need change. Change not only in terms of technology and applications and processes, but change in structures of organizations. All the organizations today were designed after World War II based on command and control, hierarchies, and vertical silos. Internet works on networking, egalitarian systems, little bit of chaos, and people are not used to these things. So world over today, there is a huge amount of confusion as to where the world is headed. Because all the leaders of the world don't understand the potential of internet, social networks, instant information, ability to network. All of these are very, very interesting concepts with huge implications on everything we do. It's not about how we use technology to do the same things we have been doing over and over again. It is about using technology to do different things. For example, I built a company in US on mobile payment. 15 years ago, I started that. And I believe mobile payment is going to change the concept of money. It will take 20 years. Because money is no longer about currency, government denominated notes. It's about trust. It's about ability to transfer. I'm sure you've heard of Bitcoin. And people are worried about in like this. Banks don't know how to deal with it. Federal reserves have no idea what to do with these kinds of technologies. Money transfer doesn't require writing a check anymore. Money transfer can be instant, globally. Today, when you want to transfer money from one currency to another, you need to pay 5%, 7% commit. You don't need all that. Cost of transaction can substantially go down with technology. 
volume of transaction can increase thousandfold. All of these are new ideas. In India, we are at a tipping point. We have young talent, 550 million young or 600 million young below age of 25. But all our processes are so very old, silly. Labor laws don't meet the needs of the 21st century. I always say that we have 19th century mindset, 20th century processes left by British Raj and 21st century needs. When I hear this debate in India, I can tell it, I feel sorry that they are still talking about things that don't really matter. No one is talking about things that really matter going forward for the young generation because they don't get it. It is unfortunate that the young people in India have not been able to take conversation. National conversation is pretty dull. And young begin to participate in that conversation as opposed to changing the The kind of world you need to build for your generation will require complete different focus. Will require focus on technology, not just IT, biotech, nanotech, digital, alternate energy. It will also require focus on restructuring organizations, delivery systems, developmental paradigm, local capabilities. But we are always looking to Western world for solutions. Everyone wants to build the world like the US, which is based on consumption and spending. That model is not scalable, workable, desirable for a country like it. We need to create our own model. And that model is not rooted in our past. That model requires great understanding of technology and capabilities. I'm glad that you all are studying telecom, IT and management because those are the tools of tomorrow. But when you learn all these things and go apply those tools to the old system, it can't deliver the things. So you go look at how our telecom ministry operates, how governments operate. Today, in spite of all this great capability, Indian government works on how to fight. I've been saying that we need to celebrate the death of Nalavali 5. Why can't we do everything in electronic files? But there is a great deal of resistance to that because people don't want change. We have 32 million court cases pending in India. Why can't he computerize all court cases? Why does it take 15 years to get justice? Why do we have police reports filed manually? Why can't we have video filing for police reports? These are the real challenges in front of us. And when you all graduate, you really need to begin to ask those questions. You need to change the conversation in the country. And you have a great foundation in IT and telecom to think differently. I believe the kind of India you want to build is possible because we are today lucky to have the kind of technology we have. IT, biotech, nanotech offer unique opportunities to solve problems differently. It is time to bring about generational change and not increment. It is time to really think very differently about transportation, about entertainment, about governance, about agriculture. Now there is a debate going on in the country about genetically modified seed. Genetically modified directly. Directly. And we can't hang on to the past. We got to move forward in the process, make some mistakes, 
take some risk. If you are not willing to make mistakes and explore new frontiers, we will be left behind. And I worry about India a lot. I worry because I see very little forward thinking. Everybody wants to go back to Kamaraj and history. God. That's not where the answer is. Answers lies looking ahead. And it's hard to look ahead. Because you don't have a crystal ball. It is hard to look back because you can rely on the history, the stories your grandparents told you. Technology is all about building future. Without science and scientists, there is no future. There is no hope. You are the hope of the country. But you have to think different. I can go on and on about this. I must tell you that my journey has been a very interesting journey coming from a small little village in Orissa to have the ability to spend 50 years in Talaka globally, not just in US, Europe and India. But I have a chance to look at lots of things in different parts of the world, in Africa, Latin America, being at ITU many times. And I see that Talaka is the key to building future world. Now we are lucky that with broadband we can begin to transform many things like education, health, governance, financial services, agriculture. The question is how do we bring about this transformation? I leave this thought with you and with this once again I am no thank. organizers for giving me this opportunity and if you have time we can open up for a little bit of conversation thank you Thank you. And, uh, yes, of course, your message has also been well taken by the young graduates in front of uh, them here and uh, will do something something good. And then it comes to QA, I'm thank thankful to you, uh, though it's pretty late, I believe it's 12 in the night. Oh, right. uh, oh it is about 12 30. Okay. No so, problem. Well, I'm taking it, uh, taking the mic to the audience. Any question? If you are interested, Seema, I will send you Harvard Business Review article written in 1993. Okay, sir. It's about a case study of what we did in India in Telecom. Great. The title of the article is Development, Democracy and Village Telephone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. For your students. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, uh, websites which describe a lot of my work on IT, telecom, innovations, you know, and there are a series of videotapes, conversation with Sam Petroda. Unfortunately, I find that young in India really don't dig enough. They don't get into details enough. It's all sort of working on the surface. It takes long time to dig. For example, if I was going to listen to somebody, I would Google that person before I hear it or her. That should be a normal practice. You have all the tools, but you hardly use them. So I would encourage you to really use new tools. 
look at Twitter, look at Facebook. You know, this is great for your education. It is not just about entertainment. So I'll send you that and I would request you to pass it on to students if that helps them. Very good morning, respected sir. Myself, Lalita Shuktikle from BITM College Telecom Batch. Sir, yes. as you were, you were talking about the broadbands that link, uh, we have a plan in India also that BSN has taken. We have we have a plan of 50,000 kilometers to lay down broadband to panchayats on our village, villages. But till now, only 15 kilometers has been covered. So I want to t I want to ask, sir, what can encourage our operators such as Airtel, Ideas, and other operators uh, rather than BSNL? to invest in uh, rural, rural areas? They don't do it. They should, but they don't. Okay, if they wanted to, they could have done it. They don't need to wait for you and me to invest. But it is not possible for them to justify business model. And that's why private investment has not come to good. Why do you think the US fund is that big? If they had invested in rural, US of fund won't be that big. So that's why government will have to take initiative to connect broadband to rural data. Once it is connected, private will find business models. Maybe in five years, they'll be able to make money at it. Today, I don't think they can make money at it. And if they could, they would have done it on their own. They are smarter than you and I put together. Go ahead. Please go ahead. Sir, these days the current Prime Minister is talking great about uh, all these smart cities and villages and broadband everywhere getting connected. Uh, you are the pioneers of the movement in this field. How do you react to this, sir? It's good. We should do that. Now, we launched a lot of these things right. in the last four years. Yes, sir. Okay. So, we have been working at it and we need to take it forward. Okay. So, more people need to join hands and take this thing forward. It's good. You said that was a question from a president, uh, Dr. Kennedy Balasubhiman. I'm taking it to another student now. Rajiv Gandhi was young leader. When I worked with him, I was also young. <laughs> so that was a big difference. I, I fought. I'm in my 70s. He was a believer in technology. He was a tinkerer. He was the only guy who had really, as a prime minister, he had worked somewhere else. Flying, flying aeroplanes, he had to show up on time, he had to push right buttons. So he understood. And he and I clicked. You know, sometimes you click with people in life. And he gave me unconditional support. Total freedom, flexibility, political will, trust, confidence. And those kinds of things don't happen. It's an accident of faith. So I was lucky to have his support. He gave me the political will. I had the domain expertise. So it worked well. If you look at atomic energy, we had political will from Nehru and we had Dr. Baba. You need that kind of support. And that was the right window of opportunity for all of us. We were all young. And we could do it. It is unfortunate that he got 
killed. We lost in him a great leader. But you know, in India, rumors and gossip sell. I remember in the election, everybody said that Gali Gali mein chor hai, Rajiv Gandhi chor hai. People believed it. Rajiv Gandhi was not chor. There was no chor in Gali and Gali. It was all bogus. But people believe these things. So misinformation can harm a nation of our size. So I miss Rajiv Gandhi personally. I worked with VP Singh, Narsinha Rao, uh, Devi Gauda, who else? Uh, Manmohan Singh naturally, Indra Gujral. But I really spent my real heart in work only during Rajiv's time and during Manmohan Singh's time. In Rajiv's time, I focused on telecom and technology missions. In Dr. Manmohan Singh's time, I focused on knowledge commission, public information infrastructure, and innovation. So you get these opportunities once in a while in life, and you do as little or as much as you can do. You know, you try your best. Next. No problem. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, my name is Dushan Bhatia from Bharati Physics of Telecom Association. Uh, sir, India based company is not that. You should provide the subject services to India. Recently, the services expired. Now, basically, you should provide the subject services with the help of the subject. That's my question. What are the restrictions in terms of resources that are not allowing BASNL or to say India to be self-sufficient to provide the satellite services? Satellite service globally is provided by Inmarsat. Inmarsat was set up as a company by multiple countries coming together to provide satellite service globally. So BSNL is just going to be doing the logistics in the country, the satellite would be from Inmarsat, equipment, hardware, software will be from Inmarsat, rest of the world is using it also, nothing wrong with it. So it's okay, it's not a big issue, as long as we get it done. My problem is, let me tell you, when we had last time flood in Uttarakhand, not this year, last time. We had no communication capabilities. I had to personally intervene. Call my friend from in Marsat. The president is a good friend of mine. Andy Shukhavati. And then there is an Indian friend, Navid Kapila, at in Marsat for the last 20 years. Called Navin. Navin provided. 50 phones. Department of Telecom had all kinds of complications. You know, I called Secretary Uttarakhand saying, take these phones because this is not the time to worry about process. Let me tell you, India used these phones heavily, haven't yet paid. Answer. Okay? We don't know how to do it. That's the problem with our processes. We need these kinds of facilities for disaster management. Whether BSNL provides or somebody else provides, doesn't really matter. But we need Inmarsat phones, satellite phones. So it doesn't matter who provides, as long as it gets done. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bala. Please, please. Sir, there are uh, management, uh, four management institutes, uh, all the children are sitting here. Telecom is one, 
uh, international business is one, uh, BAMM is one, and HRD is one, marketing, all the specialties are here. Now, for these youngsters, sir, if you have to give three advice, what will be those three advice? In three lines. First advice, first of all, I don't have advice, but I would just tell you based on my experiences, lessons that I have learned. First lesson I have learned is build a strong self. A self that is rooted in honesty, ethics, love, concern, care, discipline, all of that. Go to Gandhi to learn about how to build self. Don't get insulted by anybody. Don't take things personally. Love everybody. No enemies. No jealousy. Nothing. It's very difficult to do that. Nobody teaches you all that. No management schools teaches you that. It has to come from within. So that's what. Second thing I would do, besides building a good self, is really focus on work. To me, there are two most important things in life. Love and work. There is no third thing. Love everybody, love your work, love your friend, friend, love your dog, love your wife, love your girlfriend, love your parents, love your teacher, love your neighbor, love your cook, you know, love your cat. Love is very important in life. An unconditional love for everybody. And second is really work. I work at least 16 to 17 hours a day. I'm 72 years old. I don't need anything. Like you. I know you work, you know, long hours because that's how you build an institution like this. You know, how come nobody else built it and you built it? Because you believe in work. Young people want instant gratification. Quick results. Doesn't happen like that in life. You just have to work, 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 work. Sometimes things happen. Invariably, people want little input, no delay, lot of output. In reality, lots of input, lots of delay, little bit output. How do you explain this to young people? So that's what I would ask them to focus on. But I'm a big believer in self. You've got to build strong self. In India, I find everyone has very fragile self-esteem. Everybody is ready to be hurt. They are all hung up on man, upon, abhiman, swamar. Okay? Mahabharat is a time. Mahabharat is based on man, upon, abhiman, swamar. Gandhiji never worried about man, upon, swamar. So you just have to have a strong self. It's okay for you to disagree with me. That doesn't mean you don't like me. You may not like my idea, which is okay. But people take things personally. If you criticize their idea, they think you are criticizing them. Because we don't pay attention to build strong self. Okay. I hope that answers part of it. <laughs> Sir, to conclude this, I am really excited. See, the, uh, and I am talking to the man, and say I am 70 plus. I am talking to the man who made this technology possible in India. So, salute you, sir. Salute to you. Uh, we really thank you. Thanks for doing what you do. Thank you very much for what you do for all of us sir. and our children. And, and my students are going to change this India, sir. Good. Thank you, sir. We'll always Thank be indebted to you for, for sharing your vision with us, for giving this these important piece of advice. And as I said, we will definitely, definitely, significantly contribute to the new India. 
Thank you once again and good night. One day we should do, we should do a session on leadership. Yes. Definitely. Okay, I would love to do a session with these six, eight hundred people on leadership. What is leadership? What does it mean to be a leader? See, most of the business schools in the Western world, according to me, teach more about how to extract value as opposed to how to create value. We need to teach our children how to create value. So we'll talk about that at some point in time. Okay? Sure, sir. Very well said. Thank you Thank once you. again and uh, we'll try to take your time uh, whenever it's convenient to you. Thank you once again. Good night. Thank you. Good night.